Hi everyone and welcome. I'm Diane and my passion is painting and creating in my studio. Every day I share a video with you on YouTube in which I paint and create all sorts of nature inspired pictures. I also share loads of tips on how to make the most of your painting journey, interrupted fairly frequently by our family of dogs, cats, chickens and sheep. So welcome on board, click subscribe and turn on notifications and let's learn to paint watercolour. So today I am going to be looking at roses. Um, we've got some lovely roses in the garden and we've just arranged a little posy here from um, from the roses in the garden. Uh, this one here is um, interesting. It's, it's got absolutely packed with with petals. And this one, we have a very uh, sentimental attachment to this rose because it grows out the front of our house here in France and it grows out of the wall. It doesn't have any soil to grow in because they laid um, tarmac on the road right up to the wall, but still the rose came through. And um, it was must have been planted many, many years ago. And I like to imagine that it was planted by the people who lived in the house when it was first built and who we knew when we first moved here who have since gone on to a better place. <clears throat> and uh, so we have a kind of sentimental fondness of that one. And um, then these little pink ones here were <clears throat> from one, you know how sometimes you get them in a pot. Um, and then this one nearly died last year and we've managed to get them going in the garden now. So. We're very fond of our little roses. They're nothing I know compared to what some people manage to grow, but they're ours and so they mean something. Um, so Sunday afternoon, I'm going to do some rose doodling. I'm going to do what I call essence of rose and I'll show you how to paint the watercolour roses that um, <clears throat> are so popular. Um, going back to first principles. So if you look at a rose, obviously all the petals are growing in a circle and I remember <coughs> excuse me when I was a child I used to like to draw roses and what I used to do was I used to go like this I used to look at the rose and then I used to go oh it's kind of like this so I would do a doodle like that and then I would do a, a stem and then then the leaves like that and I would say mum look at that it's a rose look what I've done it looks like a rose and she'd go yes Diane yes okay dear um, so that was that and then uh, sort of it's a bit too rectangular though isn't it so then you develop it a bit and you start to think oh well it's actually more round like that so that's a rose too that has essence of rose doesn't it and then you'd think okay well, it's also got a few thorns on it because obviously all roses have thorns and then it's got these oval leaves and so then so then you do that and then you think oh so how am I going to paint that? And it's got these petals. So how are the petals arranged? So you look a bit more closely and you think, oh, there's something going on in the middle. And then there's like one petal like that and then one on the other side. And then there's one there. So it's like brackets around the center and they get bigger as you go out, but overlapping all the time. So you'd think, oh, well, is that, does that look more or less like a rose? Maybe it'll look more like a rose when I've painted it and I've given it some form. So then you look at the stem again and you, you put the stem in and you put your thorns in and you think, yes. And then you actually look at the leaf and you say, oh, the leaf, it's actually serrated. It's not smooth. It's got jaggedy bits and they grow quite close together. So you put jaggedy bits on your pet on your leaves and you think, ah, that's starting to really look much more like a rose. I wonder if I can do that in paint, you say to yourself. So you get out your paint set and uh, you pick up a little bit of pink. This is um, permanent rose, but any color would do. You say, right, well, what I did there well, first of all, I suppose you could start off by saying, I'll just do this. And you know what? Yep. 
it's not a it's not a perfect rose but it's the essence of rose isn't it so then we'll go for this so we start with fairly reasonably strong color because they're always a little bit darker in the middle aren't they so we just do a couple of dots in the middle and then we do a light heavy light stroke like that let it overlap a little bit and then we come around here and we do the same thing light heavy light start with a point go down and lift up and then you fill in this gap around here and then this gap around here and you could make a very big rose so there we have something remotely resembling a rose so then we might mix up another color and drop that in for a bit of variety let it touch but leave gaps then we go to the green and we do the stem and we say to ourselves okay we're going to put a leaf up here and let's remember that we want it a little bit jaggedy we're not going to try and paint all the jaggedy bits but we'll do a little bit drop in some quite decently strong green so you can mix your pink with your sap green to make that a little bit more green so there we are the evolution of the essence of rose from a sketch to a more complicated drawing and then breaking that down again and the thing is you need to make sure that you let it dry you let it sit and let it dry we do another one and then we're going to break into doodles This isn't very good paper, so it's not going to bleed quite right. But there we are. So now I'm going to prepare my palette and I'll come back in a second and we'll do a page of roses just for fun. Okay, so I'm going to restrict my palette today to three colors. And I've got here um, four containers. I've got two of quinacridone gold. They're both the same. It's both Schmincke, quinacridone gold. Um, but I'm going to have two because I'm going to mix quinacridone gold with um, olive green um, to do my leaf colours. And uh, sometimes with a touch of this one, which is um, permanent rose, I do believe, yes. Permanent rose. And I'm going to mix permanent rose with uh, uh, quinacridone gold as well in order to give me a kind of orangey color, a little bit like that. So this is going to be more or less like that. And I could bring in blue um, to mimic this uh, lilac color, but I'm not going to, I'm going to go with a restricted palette on this particular occasion. And the other thing I'm going to do today, because this is basically a doodle, I'm going to try out um, the new brushes that I just got from Drawwell, especially this one, which is the Maestro, which is, the next step up from the um, Saint-Graph or the 11-2. The, uh, the model 11-2 is the golden round, which I've been using for a couple of decades and uh, was recommended to me by Hugh Brading all those years ago and have has served me well. I think my painting took a leap forward when I switched to those from the usual um, uh, Winsor & Newton or any of the other makes. Um, and But this I haven't tried yet. This is um, a longer, has a longer um, hair length, uh, equally pointed. I think it might very well be a bit softer, a little bit less easy to control perhaps. And then I've got these ones as well, which are a cheaper version from the same company. Um, and I, I, I expect that I'm going to not really get very much use out of these. This might be handy for um, 
when I'm mixing up paint to get it activated, ideally you wouldn't use your best brushes for that because obviously it's going to cause a lot of wear on the hairs and you'll lose your fine point. So that would be something that could be used for. The other thing I've got, of course, is a couple of new flats from Drawwell. Um, and they can be used to do petals on roses as well. There's a smaller one and a big one. So I might give those a try as well. We'll have to see how I feel. And then I've got little tiny ones, which would be handy for doing um, details if we wanted to. So, okay, so I'm going to start pretty much at random. I think I'll start with the old familiar um, Saint Graph or 11-2 uh, series. And we'll start with the center and we'll start by mixing a little bit of permanent rose and alizarin, um, quinacridone gold together to make a light color. And I'm going to grab a third empty dish in order to water it down a little bit, because I think with these roses, you don't really need an awful lot of, don't need an awful lot of paint. A little paint will go a very long way. So what were we doing? We were thinking, um, first of all, we put something dotty in the middle. I'm just going to check that you can see. Yes, it's okay. And then we were going to put brackets around the center. Like that. So pressing down and lifting up, pressing down and lifting up to create essence of rose and then you can come in with the same color and just dab it in to your first round and you could perhaps pick up a little bit more pink and go, and go again basically. I think it's important that you develop your own technique here. It's easy to it's easy to go wrong with these. Very easy to end up overworking them and uh, not being at all happy with what you've done. But it is just a doodle. Just a doodle. to switch to my Maestro brush for a leaf and I'm going to mix up some yellowish green and we'll just put a bit of a stem in and then we'll take a leaf like that perhaps remembering that the And another thing you can do as well, if you want, is if I can find a sharp pointed implement. You can draw the veins in by using just a card. Like that. And they come dark just by, like magic. Okay, let's try doing a rose with this brush.
Well, I don't know what I think of that. I'm going to try the flat brush now. See how that goes. You can use the corner to get a thinner line and then twist it a bit. I don't normally work with flat brushes, so uh, I'm not completely convinced about this from my point of view, but you might find, oh, in fact, probably what I should do is not make a judgment, snap judgment. I should practice a bit more. thing to do is not to play with it too much, that I do know for a fact, but to let, um, to let the uh, colours blend on the page. And you can do the serrations just like this, just with a pointed brush, a nice pointed brush, just pull out and lift as you get to the end. And you don't have to do the serrations all the way around, just an indication really. And then you can add other colours in there to make the whole thing look more pleasant. I'm going to try another orange one using the round brush and you can press down really hard, well not really hard but quite firmly to get a wide bigger petal like that and then you can add a little bit more, a bit more movement and you can pick up some some green. This one wants to be bigger because looking at the whole arrangement. And then some green with a little bit of red in it to make it a slightly different colour.
and you can, as I said before, if you want to, draw in the veins using something like that and uh, mix and match the colours. Sometimes when you're doing something like this you want to just break away from convention and have colours that are basically not. I did a pink rose a little while ago and I did all the leaves in a sort of grey violet and it was quite nice. Let's do, I want to do a rose that's got a kind of greyish tone to it. So a bit like that maybe. Just a little bit more green to the leaf. I wonder if we can do a bud. Starting with a, and then maybe bringing it down like that. And then what we haven't done on any of these is to put in the, the sepal, sepals like that. And then, and then the stem and the leaves. like this. Because there are no rules. So they keep telling us. And the more you do, the more confident you get and the more excited about the way the colours mix. Let's do a yellow. I'm quite keen on these sort of buddy type. could let the colours run a little bit. This paper's drying really quickly actually. I 
think, I don't know what it is, as a matter of fact. I'm going to put another bud here. Maybe they're not really buds, are they? Are they sort of, you think, let the paint run a little bit there. Okay, so after you've practiced for half an hour doing it like this, you might feel that you want to sort of branch out in your own style. I would be disappointed if you didn't. Remembering what we're doing is Essence of Rose. Do you know what? I've forgotten all the way through. That's the thing, you see. Thorns. If you do a nice light leaf, like that, let's say three, and then you come in with a much darker colour. Oh, that wavy line, didn't mean to do that. And then it will bleed into it and it will give you a nice effect. So there we are. I think that's probably filled up that piece of paper. What do you think? to go back to some of the early ones and add a little bit more colour. This one looks a bit shapeless, so I could try adding some more strokes like that, maybe, see how that looks. 
And I think press one more. Maybe this one wants a little bit more dark on the leaf. Maybe this one wants a little bit more golden colour, perhaps. We'll see how it all dries. So, there we are. One rose painting for today using a few different brushes. I think I've decided I'm not that keen on painting roses with flat brushes, although I can't even remember which ones it was I did now. So it can't have made that much difference. Anyway, so still like my red one best. This one is fine too. This one needs more practice, definitely. Brush control and so on and so forth. That's always something that you can never have too much of. So I'm going to let you go now. It's definitely well past my lunchtime. I'm hungry. I'm going to go make some sandwiches. And um, I will see you again tomorrow. And tomorrow we will have probably another painting to enjoy together. Let's see what it's going to be, shall we? Please remember to like and subscribe and to recommend the channel to as many people as you possibly can so that we can continue to grow because we depend on your goodwill, sharing, Throughout the internet, um, <clears throat> social media is a wonderful place, but it can be a bit excluding and we need to break into the big time. So I'll say bye for now, everybody, and thank you. Bye bye. <laughs>